Sí. Hey, welcome to Freaks and welcome back to the podcast. My name's Amanda. And I'm Hannah. And if you're new here, hi, welcome. If you like things strange and unusual and true crime, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe or follow button. You can also head down to the description box and you'll see a link that will take you to our link tree. And you can find our social media there, like Twitter, Instagram, and all that jazz. And all that jazz. Ah. Yeah. All right, guys. So, um, I don't know when this is going to be uploaded. Probably on a Friday night. Maybe Saturday morning. Uh, if you're wondering why we don't... Well, like, last week we posted on a Sunday. This week we're posting in later. It's just been really busy. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of tests coming up. Yeah, and then my kid... My daughter started soccer. So, yeah. It might be... It'll be on a weekend from now on. We're just not going to put what day. <laughs> yeah. It'll either be Saturday, Sunday, Friday night, midnight. We don't know. Um... So, anyways, I hope everyone is ready for Valentine's Day. I hate Valentine's Day. I just won't throw that out there. Same. I don't like I'm Valentine's I'm married, Day. but I don't... Like, me and my husband don't really celebrate it. We get our kids something, but our anniversary is on the 2nd of February, so we're just always like, ah, happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. <laughs> we might get each other chocolates or something like that, but I just think it's a dumb holiday. I don't understand why Yeah. I have to tell you I love you on that day when I tell you I love you all the time. <laughs> I just don't get it. It's just kind of, I don't know, it's always a sad day. Mm -hmm. It's never really a great day. Yeah. yeah, it's just, it's weird. Um, So, yeah, I'm not a big fan of Valentine's Day, but if you are, hopefully you have a good one. Um, it's coming up. Today doesn't really have anything to do with Valentine's Day, but it does have to do with um, crimes of passion. Yeah. <laughs> crimes, crime of passion, love, um, if that's what you want to call it. If you saw the title, you know what we're going to be talking about today. And hopefully you haven't heard of her. Maybe you have. Probably most of you have. Um, but maybe we'll give you a little bit more information that you didn't know. If you if you know who we're talking about. So, we're going to be talking about Catherine Knight. She, cons she is considered Australia's, uh, like, Hannibal Lecter, basically. And mm -hmm. she's also the first woman in Australia to be sentenced to prison without the possibility of parole. So she, um, she did some bad, she did some bad stuff. And we're going to talk about it. So Catherine Knight was born October 24th, 1955. She's a Scorpio. Just like uh, you. Just like me. <laughs> They're all Scorpios. Um, she was born in New South Wales, Australia. She was raised in a pretty dysfunctional family environment. Her mother, Barbara, was married to a man before she was born um, this man was his name was Jack, and with Jack she had four sons. But she started having an affair with him with um, one of his coworkers and like friends named Ken Knight. So this part's a little confusing, but her mother Barbara was with Jack, had kids with him. They were married for like I don't know a, a hot minute, a, a long time. And then she had an affair with Ken Knight. She ran off with him. And in this small town, you know, things get around. So, basically, everybody was talking about it was such a scandalous thing and they had to move. So, they moved to a different town. And that's when they had Catherine and her twin sister. So, she has a twin sister. Um, then in 19... 59, Jack, the first man she was married to, died, and she got their two oldest sons, and they came to live with them. Mm -hmm. And this is all important because it'll come into play. You'll see. So, Catherine's dad, Ken, he was a big time douchebag. He worked at a slaughterhouse, and he was an alcoholic. He also was violent towards um, her mother, Barbara, and would often rape her mother at least like 10 times a day Damn. and the reason why Catherine knows that is because Barbara would tell her daughters all about their sexual details and what happened and she would talk about how she hates men and she hates sex and all this other stuff so right off the bat we're not shaping a very good mind um and this is like a dysfunctional way to talk to your kid obviously yeah um I don't think that he ever 
like was violent towards the kids, but he was violent towards his wife, you know. Um, so later on, Catherine would also say that she was sexually assaulted by some of her family members. Um, that's why maybe like her older brothers that came to live with her or something like that. But she said it never her dad, but it did happen until she was age 11. This has also been largely confirmed by other family members too. Um, however, some psychiatrists later would say that after evaluating her, they weren't sure if her claims were true or not, but I don't know. I mean, whatever. Some of the other family members, I guess like maybe her sister corroborated it or whatever. So some reports say she was a bully in school. She was kind of reclusive and you know, she was hateful towards a lot of her teachers. She actually would, like, try to fight some of her teachers. And so, at 15, she decided she was going to drop out of school. Then, about a year later, she started working at her dad's, um, at the slaughterhouse that her dad worked at. Mm -hmm. She became a butcher at 16. This will come into play later. And, um, I don't know why, but she did say that it was, like, her dream job. Like, her dream job was to be a butcher, which okay. is crazy. That's Weird for a 16-year-old. Yeah. Um, but she was also very good at it. She was very good at her job. She was very good at cutting, skinning, all that stuff. She would even hang her butcher knives that she had. She would hang them above her bed, and she said, and I quote, they would always be handy if I needed them, end quote. Hmm. In 1975, I mean, 74, <clears throat> she married David Kellett. They had two kids together. She said that during their 10 years of marriage, David was very violent and a heavy drinker and unfaithful to her as well. Because of this, she claimed to have a nervous breakdown um, while she was married to him or whatever. But David, however, claims that this is completely untrue and actually that she was the crazy violent one. He said on their wedding night, she was not very satisfied with uh, the sexual performance that he was giving. So she started choking him. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah that's on their the way to night. do it. <laughs> um, he also said that he woke up one morning and Catherine was like on his, like straddling him and she, he, she had a knife to his throat. Mm. For some reason, he stayed with her for 10 years, though. Not sure why. Um, Maybe he just thought she's really kinky. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. David was a truck driver, so he wasn't there a lot. And so, whenever he would leave and go on his, you know, um, halls or whatever, he would come back and she would be like, you were unfaithful and you cheated on me, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, I just went to do my job. But whatever the case was, he eventually left her. Um, cause he said he couldn't handle the violence. This is going to come up a lot, um, with the different men that she dates, marries, whatever. Well, she only married him, but different men that she dates. Um, so, uh, in the court, I'm skipping ahead, but in the court, um, that all these men did testify that she was violent and abusive towards them. Now, some of these men did obviously put their hands on her. But we don't know if it was out of self-defense or if it was because they were abusive. But whatever the case is, even if they did, both of them basically were committing, uh, you know, not sexual assault, but uh, assault, assault in yeah. general. Um, domestic violence. Domestic violence should never be done to a woman, but a woman should never do this to a man also. Yeah. <laughs> don't, you know, don't put a blade to his throat because I'm pretty sure he's not going to like it. Um, but there wasn't any, uh, evidence to say that David, her first husband, had actually, you know, hurt him or hurt her or anything like that. In 1986, she met another David, David Saunders. The next year, she had a daughter with him. She likes David's, I guess, because it's really weird. She dates, she married David, she dated to David, then she dated a John and then she dated another John hmm. and that was the last John we'll get to him but I just thought it was real strange she likes repetitive names I guess I guess so um so just like the others David claimed that she I mean she claimed that da this David was abusive however um 
It was later written in a statement that this was not true and that she was the crazy one, violent. He said that she actually stabbed him with a pair of scissors, cut up some of his clothes because reportedly she thought he was having an affair. It seems to be the reoccurring theme here. She always thinks they're having an affair. Now, she did report some of the abuse that she claimed to have had to the police, but whether it was self-defense on his part or not, it wasn't ever... Like, we don't Sad. know. Yeah. Um, but this was, you know, a pattern in her life. And in, in Catherine, in May of 1987, David said she... this uh, First of all, trigger warning. We're going to talk about animal cruelty here for just a second. If you don't want to hear it, skip forward about 10 seconds or whatever. So, in 1987, David said that she grabbed up his two-year-old puppy... And slit his throat. No. And the reason why she did this was because she said that if you ever have an affair or cheat on me, then this is going to happen. This is an example of what's going to happen to you. And then she hit him over the head with a frying pan. Is he going to still be with her after this? Mm-mm. Good. So, <laughs> leave. This doesn't seem like self-defense. So he decides to, you know, leave. He's done. It would be the puppy for me. I'd be like, all right, that's the last straw. Yeah. Not my puppy, bitch. Um, that's monstrous. I hate when they do animals. I'm like, humans, okay, yeah, all right. But then when they do animals, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she met John Chillingworth after this in 1997 and gave birth to a son a year later. Uh, their relationship only lasted about three years, so... She actually, which is really weird, which makes me believe that she's a liar because she keeps talking about these men being abusive and having affairs on her and stuff like that. But with John, she actually left him because she was cheating with a man named John Price. So, what? (laughs) He also said, like the others, that she was very violent towards him. And again... Uh, Once again, she claimed that he was abusive. Now, the courts later were never really able to definitively say 100% yes, she was abused. However, they had a lot of reasons to believe that she was the abuser. Plus, what happens later, you'll see that she was very unstable and obviously was very possibly could have done what she did. Um... So, now all this brings us to John Price. John was a father to three children when he met Catherine. He was having an affair with her. Um, His marriage of 15 years ended in 1988, not long after he met Catherine and they started their affair. His ex-wife said later that John was an amazing man. Others would say that, quote, he was a terrific bloke. Um, He also was never violent or abusive. I mean, this woman was married to him for 15 years and he never abused her or was violent towards her is what she said. So, also, I just want to say, like, if you see a picture of her, we'll we'll post a picture on our Instagram, Twitter, and all that, but if you look her up, um, she's not the best looking thing in the world. Like, I don't understand. She must have good something because (laughs) I mean the sex must be great because she's really not the best like she's not a knockout by any means I mean so I don't get it Uh, but whatever so John was aware of Catherine's reputation around town being violent nevertheless in 1995 she moved into his house at first life was nice and peaceful except for her their kid his kids would say there was a few fights you know here and there but nothing too crazy they dated on and off for the next six years so she apparently still had a house or an apartment or, or something somewhere else even though she was like kind of living with him I guess it was I mean this is his girlfriend so it's not like they're married so she's not going to completely just abandon where she's living so it was kind of she'd go home but she mostly was at his house you know what I mean yeah um but so on and off this relationship she would 
go to her house, come to his, blah, 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 blah. The relationship began, uh, became very toxic after a while. And in this relationship, there was actually evidence of both parties being abusive. Her and John, um, both were, like, there's police reports, you know, of, of Them certain types each other. of abuse. Yeah. A lot of people thought John was trying to fix Catherine since, you know, he knew about her violent streak. Um, however, she really wanted to marry John and he refused to marry her. That's what a lot of their fights were about. Um, you know, whenever they would fight, a lot of it was about she wanted to be married, and, and he was like, nope, no thanks. Understandably. Um, she even made a video, after she got pissed off at him, she made a video of some things that he had, like items that he had stolen from work, from his job, and sent it to his employer, which got him fired from this job that he had had for like a long, long time, like almost 20 years. Um, which is kind of weird because I saw some reports saying that it was like stuff that they had thrown in the trash. Hmm. I guess you're not supposed to take things out of your work's trash. I don't know. But he got fired from that job. Um, he made a lot of money. I don't really know what he did, but he made a good money. Um, so he, he found another job. But still, like, that's how crazy she was. She, like, video yeah. recorded it and sent it to his boss. She sounds so crazy. I just don't understand why these guys are just still... Exactly. I don't know. <laughs> and around. especially around town, like, if her reputation is known, like, why the hell... Like, at some point, it would be like, oh, stay away from that bitch. Yeah. Um... She also got mad and cut him across the chest one time and left a pretty deep scar. That'll come into play later. She also wanted, like I said, to be married to him because she wanted the house and the money in case everything ever happened to him. Like, because, you know, if you're married to somebody, you get their house and you get their money. Which John refused to marry her, like I said, and told her that everything would be left to his kids even if he did die. One night they were had, like, friends over at his house and they started arguing about the the marriage thing and everything witnesses said that Catherine said I quote you'll never get me out of this house I'll get you first end quote John made a lot of money like I said and he had a pretty nice house and you know he had invested his money in different things and he, I'm pretty sure he probably had life insurance but all of it was going to be left to his kids the facts that she the fact that she would say these things in front of people, to me, kind of proved, like, she didn't really give a shit. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, if she's going to say this in front of people, you know, nobody really... <laughs> I've never met anybody that has been like, God, I just want to I just want to kill my boyfriend. I just... Oh, I hate him. And I'd be like, oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, some people thought she was just... Just saying it to be mean, but I don't know. I would kind of take that as a threat. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever, like, I've had friends that have been upset with their boyfriend, and I don't think they've ever been like, I'm gonna kill him. Yeah, no. You know? <laughs> They're like, I hate him. We're done. <laughs> they never, like, are like, I'm gonna murder him. I'm like, uh, I'd be like, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. So John actually started telling his friends that he was scared for his life and that he was ready to get Catherine, like, out of the house. She needed to be gone. February 27th, 2000, Catherine and John had a fight and the police were called. Um, when they came out to his house, the report does show that he did put his hands on her. Um, but like I said, I don't know if it was out of self-defense or whatnot. But he did say that she was coming at him with a butcher knife. So, I mean, maybe. And that was like, she did say that she, you know, did do that. He also said that to the police that he wanted Catherine out of the house and the police said that they couldn't kick her out. He would have to go through the courts to do that. I don't understand that and I couldn't figure out why because they're not married. I don't know if maybe they just wanted him to get a restraining order because he does get one but I don't know. I was just like that's weird. They're not married and it's not a common law marriage. I don't think they have that there but here even if she still has another residence. Like, if she didn't have another residence and he had been living with her for, I think it's like 10 years or something like that, then you're common law married. But they had not been together that long, so. I don't know. I just thought that and was isn't weird. And isn't she, is she fully moved into his house? Or, mm -hmm. 
Okay. She's so there's, place. they're still, like, she's still going back and forth. Yeah, so I don't understand why they couldn't be like, hey, bitch, this is in your house. Get out. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> but, nevertheless, February 29th, John went to the courthouse and he took out a restraining order against her. That afternoon, John told his co-workers while he was at work, um, I don't know if he said this jokingly or if he was dead ass because yeah. he knew he was going to have to give her the restraining order and that was probably not going to go over very well. But he said to his co-workers, if I don't show up the next morning, just know that Catherine has murdered me. Yeah. John went back home to find that Catherine wasn't there, but she had sent his kids out of the house to go spend the night with someone, which he thought was odd, but whatever. He stayed over at a neighbor's house for a little while, and then he went home and went to bed around 11 o'clock. Catherine, meanwhile, had went to into town, and she had bought some sexy lingerie. Um, I guess she was going to try to seduce, seduce him. him. I don't know. Um, but whatever the case is, she shows up back at his house later. She watches TV for a little bit, and then she uh, woke him up like out of his sleep you know and they had sex and then he fell back asleep are you looking what she looks like yeah i got his name <laughs> what's her last name Catherine knight because i'm like okay this girl is crazy but she's getting all these oh no she doesn't look good at all no <laughs> she looks like a grandmother well that's what she looked like when they were dating i'll go back and you guys can see these pictures on our um oh she doesn't even Instagram. look that great yeah, I don't get it. But whatever. So, he fell back asleep after they had the sexy time. And um, this would be the last time that he would ever not be trying to fend for his life. Sometime after, this is when Catherine um, attacked him. Mm -hmm. Sometime in the middle of the night. We're not sure what time. But she attacked him while he was sleeping. That's a hell of a way to wake up. By stabbing him. According to reports from the police, it looked as though he he had then tried to get away. So, he took off running down the stairs. Outside. He tried to open the door to the outside. He got just in the doorway when she stabbed him in the back. Um, she then drug his body back into the house. And she drug him into the hallway where he bled out. She had stabbed him at least 37 times or more because, well... I don't want to spoil it. We'll get into what happened. So, we don't really... There was so much damage. They're not sure what... How many stab wounds he had. But it was 37 or more. Mm -hmm. Um, After he is dead. And he's like bled out in the hallway. She then drags his body to another room. And starts to skin him. What's insane about this is that... As... Like, we know that she's able to like skin things and cut things because she's a butcher. So, yeah. I mean, she's pretty good at it. But she skins him off in one piece. So, like, his face, Damn. his legs, his arms, his genitals, even his, like, hair. Oh. Everything is, like, one skin suit. Gross. Yeah. Also, um, I looked at the pictures and she's a redhead, too. She's a Scorpio and a redhead. Yeah. Anyways, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so are you. <laughs> um... She did, however, leave one piece of skin on his body, and that was on his chest. And what was that piece? Well, that was where she had sliced him before, and mm -hmm. he had scarred. So, she left that scar there, probably just to be a bitch. Oh, that's what I'm taking away from it. Like, haha, <laughs> see? Yeah, probably. I got you. Um, she then took his skin and hung it up on a meat hook over a door frame. It's also said that later police found a knife sharpener, um, which means that while she was skinning him, and this took all night, I'm sure, she was also, like, sharpening her knife. Like, taking a break, sharpen my knife, get back to it. Like, she was literally, like, she was at work. Damn. Um, she then, after this, cut off his head and stuck it on a soda bottle. Then she cut pieces of the meat off of his buttocks. Um, to make, like, steaks, like, cut steaks, you know. She had a big pot and vegetables, and she took his head, put it in the pot, and started to make a head stew. Wow. Out of it, yeah. Then she took the steak and cooked it 
she then plated it up with the stew, the vegetables, and she was prepared to feed it to John's children when he got back home. Oh my god. The reason why is because on the kitchen table, she had um, placed like, you know, seating place cards with their names on it and a plate next to it. Like, here, Johnny, here's your oh plate. Gosh. Here's Susie, here's your plate. Yeah. Um... Sometime after all this, she then went into town, pulled money out of John's account, and then came back, took a shit ton of pills, trying to commit suicide, and then passed out, um, like, somewhere in the house. That morning, on March 1st, John didn't show up to work, and so the co-workers were obviously kind of nervous, because of what he had said the day before. Um... They sent someone to go check on his house. When they got there, they saw the car. They knocked on the door. Nobody answered, but they saw blood on the door handle. So they called the police. Now, when the police got there, um, they didn't realize it, but they were walking into, like, a bloodbath, basically. Some of these officers, some were seasoned officers. Later, they had said that they had to take leave. Some had to quit completely. Some had PTSD for from what they saw when they walked into the house. Yeah, obviously. Um, a lot. There was just, you know, I mean, there's a skin suit on a meat hook. There's a head in a pot. There's his body. His, she had put him, basically, just his muscle tissue was showing and he didn't have a head. But she had set him at the dinner table. Mm. So... Mm-hmm. You can picture all that. That's gross. Um, yeah. So did she plan just the kids to walk in and, like, I mean, she yeah, clean like up? She, or? Well, she was trying to kill herself, so they were just going to come home. And she was hoping that, I'm assuming she was hoping that no one was going to come looking for him. And so when the kids got home from their friend's house, they were just going to walk into this. I don't know how old the kids were. Yeah. I couldn't figure that out either. But they had to have been... I mean, I'm assuming they were probably teenagers, teenagers so yeah. that would have been awfully traumatic. Thank God um, somebody found them before they came in. Yeah. So, Catherine, like I said, was passed out in the house, and she tried to kill herself, but she didn't accomplish that. They eventually, they took her to the um, hospital, and after she got out of the hospital, she eventually was questioned by police at the police station. And she said that, (laughs) she told police that she doesn't remember a thing. She said that she didn't remember um, anything except for they had sex. And then she took some of her nerve pills. And then that was it. And then she woke up in the hospital. So. So a fairy came in and did all that? Well, basically, I think she's she's trying to say that she was like... It's because of the nerve pills that that happened? Something like that? Yeah, or... Yeah, I mean, that it was because of the nerve pills, or maybe she was just trying to plead insanity, you know, where she got so upset that she just blacked out, you know? Snapped. She Mm -hmm. wanted to be on the episode of Snapped. I don't know. Um, But... Whatever the case is, February 2nd, there was just so much evidence that it didn't really matter because February 2nd, 2001, she was arraigned for the murder of John. Um, obviously, it took them a year, but she was in, you know, jail till then. And she eventually, she pled not guilty, but once the trial came up in October of 2001, um, after it started, she kind of changed her plea to guilty. She said that she did this because she decided that she didn't want the family to have to see the pictures of John and have to listen to all the things that oh, happened wow, to him. Okay. I don't She's know why she... got a little bit of sanity. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, there were even... Like, the jury members, when they were picking the jury, they were like, if you don't want to have to look at pictures of this and you don't want to be a part of this, you don't have to. Some of the jury members that did decide it was fine um because they they did show some of the evidence but they just didn't go into grave detail if they would have if she would have pled not guilty because they were gonna have to try to prove that she killed him you see what i'm saying yeah but they did show some things and some things were said so some of them like have like nightmares about this and stuff like that to this day but um november 8th the judge said that the nature of the crime and Catherine's lack of remorse 
required a severe sentencing. She was, you know, proven guilty. She pled guilty, so. And then the judge sentenced her to life in prison, uh, refusing her parole ever. And her parole papers were actually supposed to be marked and stamped saying, I quote, never to be released. End quote. Mm-hmm. And like we said before, she was the first uh, woman in Australia to be sentenced to life. In June 2006, she appealed the sentencing saying it was a harsh sentence for her. The justice at the time dismissed her appeal and wrote, I quote, This was an appalling crime almost beyond contemplation in a civilized society. End quote. Now, the question comes up whether or not Catherine really did in partake in eating John. Mm-hmm. So, there was a plate that they found, which is really odd. There was a plate with a, that steak on it. They found it outside behind John's um, house. Like, somebody had just thrown it out the back door Mm. and people were like she never comes out and says because she still claims that she doesn't remember a thing so she doesn't come out and say whether or not she did eat any of it but some people think well what if she started eating it and then she she couldn't do it so she threw it out some people there's a lot of reports that say that she did eat some of the carrots and potatoes or vegetables in the stew stew, that's that's gross even if you didn't eat his head uh, it was yeah, brewed in his head so yeah. it's still considered cannibalism um so that's why some people don't some people are like well she wasn't a cannibal but we just don't know i mean she could have there was a another plate that was made for somebody that was tossed outside mm-hmm. um so who knows now today in her prison she's considered <laughs> the prisoners call her nana because she's like you know this grandmother figure I guess Mm. um I'm pretty sure they don't you know I I guess they don't care that she murdered her husband she's probably telling everybody that he was an abusive asshole and that's why she did it um but obviously even if somebody's abusing you (laughs) I don't think you need to go that far (laughs) you know if your life is being threatened and you're being abused or beaten in the moment maybe just kick their ass but don't you know kill them that's never a good option so anyways that is the story of Catherine knight that's crazy great for valentine's i know what a loving story um but i think that she was just crazy and her upbringing didn't help and she probably just saw a lot of violence from her dad and you know she was she was basically raised in a butcher shop so she knew how to do all those things. I'm really surprised she didn't kill somebody before that. You know. And I think if he, if the other men in her life would have been... I think it was maybe the money. Because she really wanted to be was on that. Was he that rich? I mean, he was... I, I mean, by that... Her standards, I guess. Yeah, he had more money than the other guys that she was with, I guess. And... But no, because she tried to kill herself. Well, that's true. I was to say if she if she tried to hide the body and everything, that would be understandable. I think she just snapped. She was tired of men leaving her. She probably thought, "I'm not crazy." They keep saying I'm crazy, and she thought, "This one, I'm gonna kill." Mm-hmm. And then when she came, and she was probably depressed and suicidal, but she thought, "I'm gonna have." Well, one they did. Last uh, psychiatrists did say that she had. Um, schizophrenia like they did diagnose her with that but they do that with everybody that's a murderer just about so i mean you know um which puts a bad like not all schizophrenics are murderers so it just it makes it really bad for them but um nevertheless though even though she was diagnosed with schizophrenia it didn't the psychologist said it didn't matter because she was totally in her right mind when she did what she did yeah um you know, and then later on, like I said, she changed her plea to guilty and saying that she did do it, you know, after, after a while, it wasn't that a, it wasn't like a, oh no, I don't remember it. It was like, oh yeah, I did that, you know? <laughs> so anyways, but yeah, hopefully you guys, um, got something new. 
if you've heard this case out of today's case and if you've already heard it um, then go listen to another one but you've made it this far so whatever um, but I hope you guys have a great Valentine's Day um, even if you're single you know get you a glass of champagne and uh, treat yourself treat yourself um, so anyways yeah we will see you guys next week I don't know what we're going to do. I'll put a poll up because I didn't do that this week and I forgot. But I'll do it. There will be a poll on our Twitter so that way you guys can see uh, what you what you may want to hear about. And uh, yeah. So we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.